Shalom. Today we're going to find out about gematria and the 153 fish. The word gematria comes from the Greek, either the same as geometry, which is some kind of measurement, or from the word grammateo, which means letters. You know the word tetragrammaton, four letters, is a four-letter name of God. The principle behind gematria, some people say gematria, is that phrases that have the same value are deemed to have some equality in meaning or some relationship in meaning. The first documented use of gematria is from an Assyrian inscription dating to the 8th century BCE, commissioned by Sargon II. In this inscription, Sargon states, the king built the wall of Khorsabad, 16,283 cubits long, to correspond with the numerical value of his name. I have no way to verify this information. For the Hebrew alphabet, these are the number values that are used for each letter. Generally, the, the bottom line there, the sophit, the final forms, are not used, although I have seen them used in some odd places here and there, but generally they're not used. Let me be clear that if you go and do math in Israel, you use the same numerals that we use here or probably in any country that we used to do math. They don't try and do their math with the letters. But if you have any printed Bible or any prayer book or religious book, your chapter numbers will be using these letters. Also, your verse numbers might also use these letters. Now, no matter how you feel about math, if you had trouble with it growing up, it is very lovely and it was created by God. And people who study scripture find a lot of meaning in the numbers. And there's a lot of numbers embedded into the Bible. So for example, you can find pi by manipulating the, the letters in Genesis 1-1 through a certain kind of formula. You can find the constant E in the Greek in John 1-1. You can find phi, or phi if you prefer, in 2 Chronicles 4-2. And I have discussed those elsewhere, and I'll give you a link for that video. Early on in Genesis 6-8, we have this verse, but Noah found grace in the eyes of Jehovah. And if you look in the Hebrew, you see that the word for Noach, his name, has two letters, and the word for grace, chen, has two letters. They're the same two letters. So they're going to have the same number value, and therefore, even as the verse says, there's some connection between these two ideas, Noah and grace, just in case you thought there was no grace in the Old Testament. A classic example that people give is in Genesis 14, 14. When Abraham heard that his servant was taken captive, he armed his trained servants, born in his own house, 318, and pursued them unto Don. It seems like a kind of a random number, 318, but we know that there's no wasted information in the Bible. And so the gematria for Eliezer's name is 318. Remember, Eliezer of Damascus was the chief servant of Abram's house. He managed all his affairs. And so the rabbis come to the daring conclusion that only Abraham and Eliezer went out after the kings that took Lot captive. Here's something I think is interesting. If you go to Jerusalem today and you see the name printed in Hebrew, you'll see there's a Yud at the beginning, and then there's a Yud between the Lamed and the Mem Sophit. But in the Bible, it's spelled without that second Yud. And if you take the Gematria for the biblical spelling, it comes to 586. Do you know what happened in 586 BC? Another use of this letter substitution for numbers is mnemonics to help remember things. Now where you might find this is in a chumash. So a chumash is a book of the five books of Moses divided up into the sections, the parshas, that they're read in week by week. And there are 54 of those in an annual parsha reading. So I have a very old chumash from 1920 something. I guess it's 100 years old. It only has these summations at the end of each book of the five books. So I'll help you read this. 
First it says chazak, you know when we get to the end of a book, we say chazak, 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 be strong, be strong, and be strengthened to continue reading Torah. In the small print, sikum pesuke de sefer bamidbar, the sum or the summary of the verses of the book of Numbers, and then it tells you how many verses there are. Elef, uma'atayim, ushmonim, ushmone. Elef, a thousand, ma'atayim, two hundred, shmonim, eighty, shmone, eight. And so here is the mnemonic for that. You have an olive. The olive has some dots over it to remind you that it's not olive as in number one, that it is a thousand. The resh is 200, the pay is 80, the chet is 8. The first word on the second line says siman. It's the sign of that. The next little piece here tells you the middle verse of the book, which is the man whom I will choose, his rod will make flowers. And you know that story from the book of Numbers. The next counting is for the parshiot, parshiotav, his parshas. For the book of Numbers are Esrei, 10. There are 10 parshas in the annual reading in the book of Numbers, and it gives you a mnemonic for that, Bet Dalad Dalad. 2 plus 4 plus 4 is 10. And that refers to a verse. You see the two yuds between the Esrei and the Badad. Uh, those two yuds stand for Adonai, for Yehovah, and this is a verse from Deuteronomy, where Moses is recounting the history, and he says, and, and Yehovah alone led them. The next count we have is a sidra. In modern parlance, a parsha and a sidra are the same. But in older times, there was a triennial reading of the Torah. And actually, there still is, among certain denominations, a triennial reading. That reading was divided for three years, and it has 154 or some other number close to that number of sidras, as opposed to the annual reading, which has 54 parshas. So today we would say they are synonyms, but in older times they were not synonyms. And the sidra, the number of sidras from the triennial reading in numbers is shnayim ushloshim, 2 and 30, 32. This is the mnemonic. Lamed Bet, 32, Lev Tahor Barali Elohim is the sign. And you know this verse from the Psalms, A pure heart create in me, O God, etc. Now, this is from the Stones Chumash, which is a modern Chumash, and it has a sikum, a sum or a summary of these statistics at the end of every Parsha. At the end of Parsha Miketz, we can see, I have circled Kuf Mem Vav, there are 146 verses. And even if you read the notes, it says in the Sidra, it refers to the Parsha. And then it gives you these mnemonics. This discussion of what this is about is quite long. It's on this page. And on this page, I'm not going to read it to you. But if you want to read it, if it's interesting to you, then you can pause the video and blow it up and read the associations that are made through the numbers of the verses and the numbers even of the letters. Here's a useful tool if you're trying to find out the numeric value of any word or phrase. There's actually more than one of these online. You can find one. Now there is another great gematria discussion about a number in the New Testament, which is the 666. We will not be discussing that but we will talk about the 153 fish. The verse we're talking about is John 21, 11. Simon Peter went up and drew the net to land full of great fishes, 150 and three. And for all there were so many, yet was not the net broken. As we said, there's no wasted information in the Bible. The ancients believed that there were 153 species of fish in the world, but they were kind of short by about 33,450 species, so I guess that's not right. The Jewish people have always been associated with fish, and if you're interested in that, you can check out this video here. I'll leave you a link. Now, this shape has been known for a long time, and the almond shape in the middle of the dark line has a name, which is Vesica Pisces. 
which means the bladder of the fish. A fish bladder is not where a fish stores urine, like our bladder, but it's a kind of a gas or an air bladder, and it's inside the fish, and it helps the fish to control their buoyancy and to stay at their uh, current depth level without having to constantly expend energy to stay somewhere. It also functions as a resonating chamber to produce or receive sound. So we have this almond shape. Somebody extended the lines to make the little traditional fish. How is this related to the number 153? By geometry, the ratio of the width of this shape to the height is 265 divided by 153 which yields 1.73203, and this is the closest approximation to the square root of 3, and therefore this is called the measurement of the fish. If you're geometrically inclined, you can figure out why that would be the square root of 3. 153 has a lot of interesting mathematical functions. It's highly related to the number 17. It also has this function which is called the trinity function. So if you take any number which is divisible by 3, you cube each of the digits and add the result, and then you have a new number, and you perform that function again and again, and eventually you will come down to a number which is 153. It always reduces to 153. So here's an example. I just randomly chose a number, 141, which is divisible by 3. I cube the 1, I cube the 4, I cube the 1, so I have 1 plus 64 plus 1, and that gives me 66. I take the 66, I cube both the 6s, I get a result, I add it, I get to 432. I cube each of the digits of 432, I come out to 99. And so on and so on, I get to 351. And 351 will reduce to 153. Some other interesting gematria factoids on 153. <laughs> 8 times 153 is 1224, and that is the Greek gematria for the word ichthus, which is fish. E. Magdalini carries the gematria of 153, although I'm not sure what that has to do with the fish. The word Betzal El, the master craftsman of the Mishkan, of the tabernacle, has a gematria of 153. And his name actually means in the shadow of God. And that, so that's kind of interesting because we as believers are encouraged to live under the shadow of his wing. Also, the square root of 153 comes out to 12.369, which is the number of full moons in a year. And as you know, the lunar calendar is central to Hebraic worship. As we said, there are two cases at least of gematria. One is a 666. And the other is the reference to the miraculous catch of 153 fish, which is seen as an application of gematria, derived from the name of a spring called Eglion, which appears in Ezekiel 47.10. And it shall come to pass that the fishers shall stand upon it from En Gedi, even unto En Eglion. They shall be a place to spread forth nets, their fish shall be according to their kinds, as the fish of the great sea, exceeding many. There are people who believe that this is a prophecy of the Dead Sea, and even, I would say, in the past 10 years, every so often a little news item will pop up that there are fish in the Dead Sea. Actually, what there are are freshwater pools forming around the Dead Sea, and there are fish in them. Also, in Eglayim is really two words, so it would be okay to just take the gematria of Eglayim, which is 153. The appearance of this gematria in John 2111 has been connected to one of the Dead Sea Scrolls, namely 4Q252, which also applies the same gematria of 153, derived from Ezekiel 47, to state that Noah arrived at Mount Ararat on the 153rd day after the beginning of the flood. In fact, it's very close. It says in Genesis 8.3, and the waters were turned off the earth continually, and after the end of 150 days, the waters were abated. 
Now, there is some discussion as to whether there are 153 or 154 verses in Parsha Vayishlach. The stone squamash says 154, but there are 153 verses in Noah, in Parshat Noah, which consists of Genesis 6, 9 through 1132, which is undoubtedly why the Dead Sea Scrolls people connected it back to that gematria of 153. So looking at the Sikkum, at the summary, we see the letters Kuf Nun Gimel, that's 153, Pesukim verses. And what is the, the mnemonic? Oh, Bitzal El, just as we were talking about. And there's a second mnemonic, Avi Yiska Lot, which means the father of Yiska and her brother Lot. The interesting thing about Parsha Noah, let's see, it includes the flood, it includes his drunkenness and the curse of Canaan. It includes a table of nations, which might be a good connection to the verse in John, to the catch of fish. And it also includes the genealogy of Abraham. Another connection that people make, which is immediately before Parshat Noah, is the term B'neha Elohim, which appears in Genesis 6, 2, and 4. And it has a gematria of 153. Some people have tried to attach this to the B'nai El Chai in Hosea when the people are restored, but it's a bit of a stretch. In general, the B'nai Elohim at the beginning are clearly supernatural beings. They're not human beings. So we look at Genesis 6-4. There were giants in the earth in those days, and also after that, when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, and they bare children to them, the same became mighty men, which were of old men of renown. Job 1.6 Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before Yehovah, and Satan came also among them. So clearly they're not human beings. Whether they're up to no good at this point, we don't know, uh, as they were in Genesis, up to no good. We see them in Job 38, 7. So from verse 4, God is trying to straighten Job out and say, where were you on the day that I created everything? So he says in verse 4, where wast thou when I laid the foundations of the earth? Declare if thou hast understanding. Did you see this? Did you see this? When the morning stars sang together and all the sons of God shouted for joy, the Beneha Elohim, supernatural beings that were created before the human being. The first shift we see in meaning is in Daniel 3.25, when the three Hebrew boys are in the furnace. He answered and said, Lo, I see four men loose, walking in the midst of the fire, and they have no hurt, and the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. And then we see that the Son of God is Yeshua. In Mark's Gospel 1.1, the beginning of the Gospel of Yeshua the Messiah, the Son of God. And finally, we see through our salvation process that Yeshua has given us the right to be called sons of God because we are a new spiritual creation. Romans 8.14, for as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. 1 John 3, 1 and 2. Behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed on us, that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. Doth not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. So these are the many strings that tie up to give you a picture of the great catch of the fish, the 153 fish. Until next time, Tosimita'inayim ahashamayim, keep your eyes on the sky, your redemption draweth nigh. Shalom.